but there are different theories of how the universe might end. We've got a theory of how the universe started with the Big Bang and this period of intense, like you and I are currently, well, I don't know. We're probably, I'm in Scotland right now. So we're probably, wow. I don't no, know. I'm in, I'm in Scott. I'm in Scottsdale. <laughs> Scottsdale. Oh, fine. Okay. <laughs> So I was going to say we're only like a foot apart, which is amazing that it feels like that. But um, no, we are we are many thousands of miles apart. But something thousands of miles apart at the beginning of the universe would now be billions of light years apart. So that happened at the beginning of the universe. We've got this insane period of, of expansion. We call it the Big Bang. And now we want to know what will happen at the end? And I think that's a different question of the theory of everything. That's like a, the theory of everything, like what is matter and how does it interact and what is dark matter and gravity is like one area of physics. And then cosmology is like, where did we come from? Where are we going? That is a really fascinating area of, of thought and, and exploration and research to me is what's going to happen to the universe in the end. There are all these theories that it might just kind of continue on expanding forever there's my favorite theory which is that eventually it'll slow down in its expansion because the universe right now is expanding you've probably heard yep. the universe is expanding but maybe it'll slow down and come back together and bounce like it'll come back together and bounce and have another big bang and it, it may just keep doing that so that's where I've seen repeating patterns come into physics on the biggest scale would be that's my favorite and then of course there's the there's like the I don't know like the cold death of the universe or something where it just like expands and expands forever and then eventually there's no stars near us and everything's dark in the sky and it's very depressing so <laughs> yeah yeah there's exactly some, like when my brain goes there's no end it goes far infinity <laughs> and then I'm like but there has to be an end but there's not and what is it and I, I know I know and that's where I, you've got, I mean even if there was like a black hole that created a loop, even if time bending creates like sort of like a bubble of a universe, yes. what's beyond that bubble? And are there multiple I, universes? Is it a multiverse? And what's in between the multiverses? I is don't know. I would love to know. That's one of the most, I think this is like, as a physicist, that's one of the most frustrating sort of barriers I get to mentally where where if there, if we have this bubble of a universe or something, and there are other universes outside of it, here's the sad fact. We will never know because by definition, our universe is everything that we can contact, we can get light from, we can see, we can learn from, we can get like data from these stars billions of light years away. But if there's anything outside of it, by definition, we'll never know about it. So that's where I'm like, oh, so yeah. frustrating. I want to know, like when you reach the limit of what we possibly can know and you're like, but, but, but why not? Let's talk about dimensions then. I mean, okay. I was going to talk about quantum entanglement, <laughs> but let's, let's get into dimensions. Okay, so okay. we have sort of our, our reality that we know of that we can touch and feel this third yeah. dimension, which explain dimensions and then how many we have. Actually, there, there's a video I recently made about this. And I think this is a, probably a fun angle to talk about dimensions. So have you ever heard of um, time crystals? I have not, but I was watching that video and it oh, was no. overwhelming <laughs> my brain. Yeah, I, I, haven't, I, but I didn't get it. I didn't completely <laughs> get it. I was like, yeah, well, yeah. Actually, I'm very curious about crystals because there's theories that crystals kind of record information. And isn't there, I mean, things at the subatomic level are crystalline mm -hmm. in structure. Is that Yeah, correct? yeah. Yeah, so things at the at the atomic level and the, the molecular level are crystalline. And what that means right. in a physical sense is that uh there's this repeating pattern so you'll look at <laughs> there it is again yes <laughs> the moment you've been waiting for the repeating, <laughs> repeating pattern. I told you we only have 57 minutes <laughs> to figure out the theory of everything but yeah, we're yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's going to involve fractals crystals uh black <laughs> holes dark matter and <laughs> basically when we unite the 13 crystal skulls <laughs> thanos is crystal um fist Yes. I mean, um, I have a lot. I didn't of tell you was there was a time crystal on the other fist. 
Uh, but no, what is a time crystal? Okay. Uh, yeah. So, so crystals are this this uh, structure, um, this sort of material that has a repeating pattern. So, if you look with a very very strong microscope at a diamond. Uh, you'll see this repeating pattern of carbon. Well, I think I remember seeing the when I, in the video, it's basically like a grid structure. Exactly. Yeah. And, and there are bonds at the, yep. at the grid points, there are bonds. Yeah. And there are, there are mo molecules between, so you'll get carbon right. and then with different types of crystals, like tanzanite and rubies, and uh, you'll, you'll have different kinds of like silicone and, um, and nitrogen and other types of things that actually change the color. So when you add silicone instead of more carbon, then you get a green diamond or something. So when you, with this repeating pattern of, of atoms or of molecules, uh, you get a crystalline structure. That's a repeating pattern in space. And so um, what I asked my editor who I was talking to in that video was how many dimensions are there? Like how many do you know of? I kind of am very into the sort of spiritual woo woo world as well. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure. I think they say 11 or 12 dimensions. A human experiential perspective. Sure. But like from a physics perspective is going to be such a different answer. So the dimensions from a physics perspective, the three dimensions of space, there are three is, yep. you know, forward, backward, up and down. And side to side, but there's actually a fourth dimension of space time. So the fourth dimension is time. And so a, a professor, a Nobel laureate at MIT was like, what, what if, just bear with me, what if we had repeating structures in time? And that's where he lost me, but he explained it as like, you imagine this, this very small system that just flips to a different state and then it flips back and then it flips. Like imagine, I don't know, maybe imagine a ring on your finger and the, the gem just flips to the bottom and then it flips back to the top and it flips back to the bottom. And it just does that automatically, periodically in time. He was imagining a system, not as big as a ring, but on a really small scale, like the atomic scale as in the repeating atomic structure of crystals, he was imagining this repeating in time. And so I think it was a really creative way of thinking about dimensions and thinking about what you can do in space dimensions, but now doing it in time. That's that's a, a, a brief little sort of mental fun play thought experiment for what you can do with dimensions. If you're using uh, the time dimension and when things flip, you're saying that that would essentially be a dimension flip? It would be a, a flip in the time dimension. So that repeating structure like silicone, carbon, silicone, carbon is like a, a space repeating pattern. Uh -huh. But if you're flipping this state in the time crystal, then you're mm -hmm. flipping in time because you're going back and forth and back and forth. And that re repetition, that repeating. So if it's not silicone, are you saying it goes to like something else? Yeah. The, the, what they ended up making with a time crystal was like quantum atom. They were the electrons inside of a quantum computer. So nothing to do with silicone atoms, nothing to do with a ring flipping up and down. It's something like we would never even be able to see it. It's so small and complicated, but they would consider a time crystal because it's this kind of system, like a ring flipping up and down that repeats in time, repetition in time. And they called that a time crystal. It keeps and going. That, exactly. Got it. Okay. So it's not just it's just naturally repeating in a cycle. Yeah. And it, and, and why it was so special is that you sort of, it doesn't take any energy to do that. So this is like, this was one of the, another question people love to ask me all the time, um, is whether we can make a perpetual motion machine where like you, you're like, okay, but what if you could, uh, have a, a solar panel on top of your car and you shine a flashlight on it <laughs> from the car and it'll just keep going and power. I'm like, okay, but the energy has to come from somewhere. It has to come from inside of the battery. So it, it, it's not perpetual motion because and they're like, but no, but you connect the solar panel back into the, the flashlight too. And I'm like, great idea, but there's going to be, lots along the way. yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's going to be losses along the way. And eventually the system will die. It just will, no matter what you do, it will die. No matter how many times you ask me in the YouTube comments. <laughs> so if we're talking about a loop then, and we're talking about time, 
time bends mm-hmm. and that mm-hmm. essentially yes. Yes. with enough distance or bending for a long enough period of time yeah. Yeah. It comes back on itself. I would say, do we know that? No, but there are totally legit theories that um, if you bend space time enough, you could come back around in a loop. How would you do that? We don't know. We, how would you like practically do that? We haven't found a way to come back around, which means like, would you be technically coming back around and meeting up where you were in time? Another re- another big question of the universe that we don't know the answer to yet is why time only goes in one direction. Because in our experience, right, you can walk back and forward. You could even reverse your car on the track. Typically you don't, I'm guessing. You don't usually go backwards. Not much. You, do, you don't want to. <laughs> if you're reversing, you're in deep shit. <laughs> has that has that ever happened? Oh, sure. Like you get in the wrong spot, like something happens on pit lane or whatever, yeah. go off the track and are nosed up to a wall and you need to back up. Yeah. I mean, you need reverse. Yeah. <laughs> this is an amazing day that I've gotten to ask Danica Patrick, if she ever, ha- if anyone has to reverse their car, like, you cannot, uh, you can go backwards and forwards in your car. You can walk side to side, you can jump up and down, but you can't go backwards in time. And we don't understand why, like it doesn't, it's kind of just our everyday experience, but this is where physicists love to be like, but hold on, why would you just accept that? There should be a reason why we can only go forward in time and we don't know what that reason is yet. So I wonder again, if time, like we rethink gravity, we rethink time, we rethink all of these things. I wonder, I was listening to something the other day and something I think, I don't know if it happens to you, but stuff like words arrive in my head and then I hear them. And so time is a measurement. This is what arrived in my head. Time is a measurement of entropy. So it's like when you attach it to just entropy, then yeah. it, it it does connect to moving forward. Like we think of time as like there and there and everywhere and forward and backwards, but yeah. maybe time is more just a, a measurement or an explanation for entropy. I've never heard entropy brought into the definition of time, but I, I, I say that because I think that, um, I think it's a really, really interesting and useful way of thinking of time. And especially thinking of entropy because that's fine entropy other... though, just in case. Uh, just in <laughs> yeah. Case I was going to say, yeah. So one know. of the other, one of the other accepted laws. And in fact, the reason why we can't have a flashlight shining on a car and perpetually on a, a solar panel on a car, perpetually powering the car. Um, although you should pitch that to, the <laughs> it's a good idea. At NASCAR, see what they say, test their uh, belief in uh, the thermo- laws of thermodynamics with flashlight powered cars. <laughs> <laughs> Be like, hear me out, but really you're just testing them. Mm-hmm. 